Okay, time to get into some basic C++. Throughout any program, you will be using lots and lots of stuff or information. Like if in your game program you have to keep track of a whole bunch of scores and points, or if in your address book program you're going to be keeping a lot of names and addresses and stuff like that, all of this stuff, all of this information needs to be existing somewhere in the program. Well, the way this is done in C++ and probably all programming languages is we have these uh, special uh, storage rooms, so to speak, where we could keep, store away lots of this information as we use it throughout our program. There is actually one big uh, storage room, so to speak, on your computer, which is your main system memory, known as RAM, R-A-M, and that's pretty much where all of the stuff, all of these numbers and words gets stored away while your program is running. So when we're making our program, we would like to access this uh, storage room and put a whole bunch of stuff in there that we could uh, use throughout our program. The way this is done is by creating what's called variables. A variable is like, you could think of it as a small storage box, which uh, you could put stuff inside of. So you create the box and you put some stuff inside of it. Later on you can come back and check what's inside and you can change what's inside. You can uh, throw away the stuff that's inside. You could throw away the box and stuff like that. And that's pretty much how uh, variables work in C++. You create a variable and this variable, like a box in a storage room, will have a label on it, a name. What's the box's name? And then with this name of the box you could take control over this box and put stuff inside, then come back later on to the box and check what's inside of it, change it around, and do whatever you need to do with the stuff that's inside this box. In C++ there are very strict rules about the types of variables, the types of boxes, the types of stuff that you could put in them. Like continu continuing with our example of the storage box, um, you may have a storage box which is only made to hold crayons and you'll never be able to use this crayon box to uh, store away a whole bunch of teddy bears or other stuff like that. It is a box that's only made for crayons. You could put a red crayon, a blue crayon, a green crayon, but you can never put anything else other than crayons inside this storage box. This is how variables work in C++. You have very specific types of variables, types of boxes, which can only hold very specific types of stuff. For example, if you've made a variable that's made to hold numbers, as we're going to see very soon, you cannot use this variable, this box, to store uh, names, letters, stuff that are not numbers. We're going to see more about this thing later on. So let's make a variable and see how it is used. We're going to make a variable which will hold numbers. In C++ we have the INT keyword, int, which stands for integer and which means we are now creating a variable which will hold numbers, integer. Now we're going to give our variable a name. Let's call our variable x. And then we obviously need to have the semicolon. So this is basically telling the compiler um, I'd like to create a variable which will hold numbers and I am na naming this particular variable x. So now we have a box in the big storage room called X, and this box could hold a whole bunch of numbers. You can make however many boxes, number boxes that you'd like. Let's make another one. Int Y. Now we have two boxes, each of which could hold a whole bunch of numbers. Well, actually, not a whole bunch of numbers, just one number. 
but this number could be anywhere between zero and a very big number. We'll get into those details a little bit later. So let's put some stuff into these boxes. X, let's assign to you seven. This is the equals symbol and in this case it's called the assignment operator and this will assign the value 7 into the variable x so now the box x contains the number 7 and let's give y 10 okay so we have two boxes in the big storage room one of them has 7 and the other one has 10 again every box can only have one number at a time that number could be anything between 0 and a big number as we're going to see later on. So if I type now again x equals 8 what will happen is the compiler will throw away whatever was inside x which until now was 7 and it will give it this new value which is 8. So before the variable x had 7 right now it has just 8. Now here's a fun thing about variables that when you refer to their name many times maybe even most of the times you are referring to the contents that's inside the box if you've ever done algebra or basic math you know that math doesn't always have to be uh, numbers and numbers it could be also as you see symbols like X and T or different stuff which you might have seen when you were learning math this is how stuff works with the variables too. When I say now x plus y, what, I'm re what I really mean is what's inside x plus what's inside y, which in our case is 8 plus 10, which yields 18. So using the variable names really expresses the variable contents. Let's see this work in action. Let's do our magical concoction which prints stuff to the console window. Let's print x and let's print y and then let's print x plus y. So now the compiler is reading this stuff so it knows okay we're going to be printing something to the screen and then it sees x hmm what's x oh we just recently saw that x is a variable of type integer it's a number variable and we also saw that we gave it a number seven. Oh, but then we changed our minds and we gave it a number eight so this is a variable which is holding the number eight so if the user is saying that he wants to print x the compiler calculates this as the contents of x so we are going to get the contents of x printed to the screen same with the contents of y and as we saw in another video that the compiler will also do mathematical calculations like 15 plus 17 as we saw in a different video same thing the compiler will do here when it sees x plus y it'll take the contents of x and add that to the contents of y and the result will be printed to the console window let's see this in action let's compile and see how this works compiling everything went well here we go we didn't put any spaces between any of our stuff so that's why everything is connected together in one big jumble but we could still figure out what's going on over here we asked the compiler to print x so here we have x x was 8 if you remember then we told the compiler to print y which is 10 and then we told the compiler to print x plus y which is 18 as we see right over here and then told them to wait until we type something in there we go let's type something in and enter and there we go